Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Fryman, the Chief of Hepatobiliary and Pancreatic Surgery at St. Joseph Medical Center. Today we continue the Whipple Procedure tutorial series and talk about Whipple Procedure Survival. I am frequently asked by my patients and, co and a very common Google search is on Whipple Procedure Survival. Uh, today's tutorial will try to elucidate some of the data uh, surrounding this question. In order to answer the question of the survival of patients with pancreatic cancer who have Whipple surgery, the first um, point that must be elucidated is short-term versus long-term survival. Uh, surgeons, when surgeons speak of operative uh, survival or 30-day uh, operative mortality or short-term survival, we're talking about the survival from the operation in and of itself and not necessarily the disease process. And I think that this is sometimes a confusing um, term for patients in that sense. So when speaking with patients on what is the survival, of, or what is the success of the Whipple procedure, or what is the survival rate, um, most series show that operative mortality is for Whipple surgery is now under 5%. Uh, we've come a long way uh, since the 60s and 70s with the early years of the Whipple procedure. Uh, in other videos, I describe uh, the complications of Whipple uh, surgery, uh, as well as some of the reasons why the morbidity uh, is high. But by and large, um, under 5% of patients have a, an operative death within a 30-day period. Um, at St. Joseph Medical Center in the past five years, we've actually had zero deaths. Uh, and our, our operative mortality um, in general since the inception of the center is probably in the in the one percent range, but uh, nationally uh, acceptable um, mortality is under five percent. Clearly, patient selection is what is important um, when you perform Whipple surgery, which a complicated which is a complicated operation on patients who have significantly more comorbid risk factors such as heart disease, lung disease, etc. Um, your chances of getting them through the surgery is more difficult. Uh, it is a complicated operation, uh, which takes about three to four hours uh, in our hands, sometimes longer at other institutions, um, with a lot of complexity involved. So performing the Whipple surgery with a mortality of under uh, 5% in the 30-day period uh, is what uh, is probably standard. Long-term survival, however, um, reflects the, uh, assumes that the patient has recovered successfully from the procedure um, and reflects more uh, on the biology of the cancer and whether or not the surgery plus the chemotherapy and radiation produces a uh, cure. And I'm going to uh, review some of the data from different institutions um, as to the survival uh, in the long term. We'll just start with some basic um, statistics from different lar from uh, several published large series, uh, and I'll summarize them. Uh, patients with adenocarcinoma of the pancreas who have successful Whipple surgery um, have a five-year overall survival uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 percent uh, depending on the series. Now more recent series um, with more sophisticated chemotherapy and radiation which is also inclusive in the treatment, it's not just the surgery, tends to show that the survival is probably somewhere between 15 and 20 percent uh, in modern uh, series. And we use five years uh, as what we consider potentially cured or closer or, or the cure rate. Uh, if you make it out to five years, it's not a hundred percent chance that you're cured, but you're, the chances of cure are, are greater. So as you can see with adenocarcinoma of the pancreas, patients who undergo Whipple surgery plus uh, 
um, further treatment, which is either chemotherapy alone or radiation alone or chemotherapy plus radiation, uh, overall um, survive five years only in the 15 to 20 percent range, meaning that the majority of patients are greater than 80 percent of patients are not cured. Uh, we also use the term median survival um, um, to basically give an idea of the survival after surgery and median survival um, for pancreatic cancer who has uh, in patients who have had either Whipple surgery or, or other types of resection resections are in the uh, 18 to uh, 20 month range. So what are the prognostic factors that we can help determine where you may uh, lie? Um, and I'm going to go over those prognostic factors uh, right now. So the prognostic factors that determine survival, number one uh, is the lymph node status. Uh, during Whipple surgery, we generally take out uh, somewhere in the order of 15 to 20 lymph nodes um, as part of the specimen. Uh, we do not routinely perform extended lymph node uh, resections, um, and I discuss that in a uh, separate video. The size of the tumor is important. Uh, generally, these, these cancers are usually in the you know, in the two to five centimeter range, um, when they start getting over five centimeters, they're generally not not operable. And the last uh, factor is whether or not the entire tumor was uh, removed, um, and so what we we call that margin status. So, it, are you what we are you a an R zero or margin status? negative versus an R1, which is microscopically positive margins, versus an R2, which is just gross tumor uh, present at the margins. So the, the best data to look at um, as far as numbers is probably uh, the Hopkins data. Um, since over the past 20 or 30 years, they have, they have performed uh, more Whipple surgeries. Um, than any other institution. And in 2007, they, uh, they, they published uh, in, in a journal called Surgery uh, a very good kind of uh, review of this topic uh, with regards uh, to lymph nodes. Um, I think it makes intuitive sense that if the marg if you didn't take out the cancer completely and your margins are positive, that you're going to uh, have a lower uh, chance at being cured, unless uh, unless you rely on the radiation or chemotherapy to cure it, which can happen. Um, clearly, I think it's also intuitive and quite logical that as the tumor increases in size, the chances of survival goes down. Um, but what's interesting is looking at the uh, lymph node uh, status um, and the number of lymph nodes involved clearly uh, portend uh, a worse prognosis when the number is high. Uh, usually, like I said before, that 15 to 20 lymph nodes are uh, examined in the typical Whipple specimen. Um, what's interesting is that only 20% of patients who have surgery are truly lymph node uh, negative versus 80% that are lymph node positive. So the majority of patients do have positive lymph nodes and the extent of lymph node involvement portends to survival. So I took this, um, this data from uh, Dr. Pollack from Hopkins um, uh, paper that was uh, published in surgery in 2007 uh, where he cleverly used what, what's, what's the, the lymph node uh, ratio to coral and used it to help determination correlation with uh, survival and this is median survival over here I didn't have enough room to write it out 
So if there are zero lymph nodes involved, uh, median survival is, is 25 months. This is in months. Um, zero, or zero to 20 percent of the lymph nodes involved, uh, the survival is 21.7 months. Uh, 20 to 40 percent, it's 15 months. And greater than 40 percent of the lymph nodes involved, it's only 12 months. So it does go down um, in a with direct in a direct correlative fashion. Um, I think this information is useful um, uh, because we do get, since I mentioned, we do get 15 to 20 lymph nodes, uh, and postoperatively, uh, it is easy to characterize uh, the ratio of the lymph nodes. Um, and with with this data, um, I think it is useful information to patients because uh, they quite frequently uh, do ask what their what their survival chances are. How did the pathology look? Uh, obviously, they need to determine you know, the information as to whether there are zero or R1, for example, is important if their margins are positive or not. Um, so I hope this video helps elucidate some of the, um, the mysteries of survival after Whipple surgery.